Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Joel. Today, I'll share with you how to interact with the Excel spreadsheet that was generated from the SAP script, where the SAP script and the Excel interaction steps can be performed all within a single process. With that being said, let us get started. First, what I have here is a script that helped me generate a customer master list from SAP and store it in SAP demo exports folder. Since we have gone through the steps in recording and developing SAP script before, I won't be explaining it in details in this video. If you'd like to understand more about how to develop your own script, be sure to check my previous video on SAP scripting with VBA. Once the table has been exported from SAP, I will split the customer master list data into multiple tabs based on the customer's countries. To pass on the file path of the extracted customer master list from the script, I'll need to change the sub-procedure into a function. Within the function, I will add another line to define the output of the function, which is the extracted list file path. With function, I will be able to return the defined output, which can be used in the subsequent steps. Let me create a sub-procedure to split the data into different tabs. Before getting started, let me declare a few variables that I will be using later on. For the file name, if we were to call the function to return the file path, simply copy the function name and paste it in, treating it like a variable. Then, in the next line, I will open the workbook with the file path returned from the function. If we test it out here, you can see when we are executing the line, it will go to the function and start executing our SAP script. Since I know the SAP script works, Instead of running it every single time when we are debugging the sub procedure, I will assign the file path to the file exported directly when we are developing the sub procedure. I will replace the file path with the function once I make sure the sub procedure is working. To make sure that it is working, let me try running it. You can see when the open workbook line is being executed, the Excel spreadsheet is being opened. Next, we need to identify the last row of the spreadsheet. Then, set the unique range variable as the column that will be used as a basis to split the data. In our case, it will be column H. Then create an array of the unique countries by using the worksheet function .unique. Now if we try and run the line of code, you will observe that unique array now contains the list of unique countries in an array form. To access those array, I will be using a for loop here to loop through from the lower bound to the upper bound of the array and access its value. I will assign the value as the country variable. Then filter the entire spreadsheet where the country, which is column 8, is equal to the country variable that we have assigned. After we have filtered the spreadsheet based on our criteria, create a new worksheet where the name will be the country. The next step would then be to copy the filtered table into the newly created worksheet. Now, if we try and run the loop twice, you can see that new worksheets for DE and GB has been created. And the list of customers with country code DE and GB has been pasted in accordingly in the worksheets. By the end of the loop, we should have an Excel workbook with all the data split into individual worksheets sorted based on their countries. Right after creating individual tabs for the different country, the next thing we need to do is to unfilter the master table and return it back to its original state. Save the workbook with the newly created tabs and close it. Also, I will set the display alerts property to false at the start of the sub procedure to ensure any prompts and alerts messages will be suppressed while I'm running the script. One last thing to do before we run it again is to replace the file path from a static value into the function that contains the SAP script. This means that Whenever we run the sub-procedure, the function will be triggered exporting the SAP table we need and return the file path of the exported spreadsheet. Let me click on the play button to see how everything works together. Now 
That's it. A single sub procedure that is able to run the SCP script and subsequently format the exported Excel file all in one go. Hopefully with this video, you will be able to understand how to interact with the exported Excel file, whether it is filtering the exported data or applying different formatting onto the spreadsheet with VBA. The possibilities are endless. Just play around with it and I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. If you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up as it always reaffirms that the content that I am providing is valuable and helpful to you. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.